What's going on, Dolph fans? It is your boy Dylan, and I am here to do my preview video for the Miami Dolphins versus Carolina Panthers. It is at Hard Rock Stadium. It is a home game, and as I'm sure you guys know, we actually um, we are at home for the next few weeks. Obviously, we have our bye week in week 14, but we are home for the next few weeks uh, until after Christmas. Um, so, you know, hopefully we can take care of business. Obviously, we're looking to, if they, especially if they do want to try and make a late season push for the playoffs. I do think that over the next few games in this, you know, soft part of the schedule, this is definitely a tough game. Before I get into that, though, just real quick, um, I was going to make a video yesterday. I was going to make one of my scouting report videos, and it was actually going to be, you know, for the Carolina Panthers for uh, week 11. Unfortunately, though, spent the whole day in a power outage, so uh, I couldn't um, for obvious reasons. Um, so, you know, I'm just going to do that tomorrow. It's, you know, going to be a little funky doing it after the, the preview video and not exactly how I like to do it. Um, but it is what it is, so there's that. Also wanted to mention, too, that uh, the Dolphins restructured Xavier Howard's contract um, actually too which was some news yesterday um yeah and look you know i know a lot of people like to shit on xavian howard for you know holding or holding in technically because he didn't hold out he you know reported to training camp he just didn't participate with his injury right um you know and and for you know wanting more money to begin with etc but look at the end and you guys know me i've been on his side 100 percent and in large part because at every turn xavian howard has proven that he wants to be with the dolphins long term this is where he wants to retire he said so he just wants to be treated fairly treated with respect and you know treated like the kind of caliber of player that he is paid like the caliber of player he is and you know anyway so there is that. That is good news, though. And I mean, although, honestly, I'm not really sure it does a lot. You know, and in all the reporting I had seen on it, it was like, you know, to help them get through the rest of the year, which is just interesting. Um, but, you know, he's a team player. You know, as much as people like to try and say that he's not, he absolutely is. But anyway, let's move on from that. Let's go ahead and get into this preview. So... Let's jump into that. Obviously, we're going to start here with the injury report. I don't know why, like, the past few weeks, um, they just haven't, they haven't been giving the final, they haven't been giving the final, like, designations when I go to make this video. I, because that's part of the reason why I wait until Friday to do my videos is because I want to try and make sure to have, you know, the Friday injury report having been released with game status designations. But unfortunately, there isn't. Although, um, I do know that... Where is he? Is he on? Yeah, Adam Shaheen. He is not going to be playing in this game. Dieter did return to practice. Uh, I did mention that in a previous video. Uh, I don't know that he's going to play, but he was at practice. But let's just go ahead and take a look at the rest of this. We have Elijah Campbell with a toe knee, Adam Shaheen with a knee injury. He's not expected to play. He's expected to be out. Um, uh, Javon Holland with a knee ankle um, and Brandon Jones uh, ankle elbow. And yeah, Barry Jackson had reported that they both have, our safeties both have, um, you know, multiple injuries, which... It's unfortunate and it's concerning because, especially considering the fact that over the past few weeks, the defense has played better and it's been in part because of these safeties playing at a really high level and being able to be used, you know, in blitz, blitz packages that have obviously proven to be very effective um, and whatnot. The problem is, is they're getting banged up. So, you know, the question will be, will they be able to hang, uh, you know, hold tough throughout the remainder of the season? you know in those roles which help allow and uh, you know allow the defense to be more effective and more aggressive you know and then will they be able to hold up long term playing those roles because you know even guys like you know long time safety and one of our you know um better players over the 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 past several years before you know he left and retired or whatever was rashad jones right uh but you know 
shoulder injuries started to pile up for him and, and other little, you know, little injuries, right? Because it's, it, and especially if you do get used as, you know, an in-the-box safety that, that helps in run support and is used in blitz packages and stuff like that, like both of these guys are, yes, they are young and promising, but unfortunately, you know, they are, they play in roles that are quite taxing, you know, it, even to a higher level than normal, than, um, you know, playing, so playing as physical and as hard hitting as they are. So that is something to keep an eye on, you know, how effective will they be? Uh, and then you have, you know, Xavier Howard and Byron Jones who are currently listed as non, non injury related vet rest, which is good. So hopefully both of those guys are, you know, I mean, I, I can't imagine that really anybody at this point in the season is a hundred percent healthy, but it's good to see though, that at least they're not listing injuries, like their groin injuries, you know, um, Howard had a groin and I want to say it was a groin and a shoulder and Byron Jones was groin and Achilles. So the fact that they're listing them as non-injury related is good. So hopefully those injuries are, you know, well enough recovered that it's not really effective. And they have both played overall better um, the past few weeks, you know, which has helped the defense to improve its level of play. But, you know... We'll see how that goes. Um, obviously, all of these guys got to stay healthy. But then you also have, and we know that, you know, our linebacking core obviously got, you know, kind of banged up. Landon Roberts got banged up in this last game with his hip injury. Uh, Brennan Scarlett obviously got put on IR. So, you know, and Christian Wilkins is battling an injury with his quad. Uh, Trill Williams with a hamstring, Jerome Baker with a knee, Robert Jones with a wrist, Eric Rowe with a hip, and Preston Williams with a knee. So have a very lengthy, you know, and again, that was one of the things that I was concerned about going into this season, one of the many things, and, and one of the things that has been a contributing factor to the, you know, declined level of play from this team is has been the injuries. And, you know, this is a lengthy injury report, not to mention all of the guys that are currently still on injured reserve, you know, like Will Will Fuller and, and Devontae Parker and Malcolm Brown and several other guys as well. You know, Brendan Scarlett, Jason McCourty, right? So, you know, it's something to keep an eye on. And uh, hopefully, you know, Hopefully these guys can just play through it and continue, you know, continue the uh, a higher level of play and trending in the right direction and, you know, so on and so forth because, uh, I mean, one, it's just, it will be nice to win games. It'll be nice to be competitive. Um, you know, I'm not... I'm not at the point yet where I'm ready to say that, yes, they're going to be able to get to 10 and 7 and make that playoff push, um, you know, but... Hopefully they can. And then obviously for guys who aren't playing next man up mentality, right? And so hopefully they can continue the upward trend. The past few weeks, we have seen, you know, predominantly upward trends when it comes to like the league standings, for example. So obviously production on the field, obviously we're on a three game win streak. So that's what we want to continue. Obviously in here, not very much for the Carolina Panthers. So they are very much healthy uh, overall. The only person that is doubtful is guard John Miller. Otherwise, the other three guys guard Dennis Daly, defensive back Miles Hartsfield, and defensive tackle Daquan Jones all should be good to go for the game. Uh, okay, now let's go ahead and jump into my preview here, my little preview template, because uh, there are some good things and good little tidbits here to talk about so obviously when it comes to you know record head-to-head -head record they are obviously one game better than us um we're four and seven they are five and six so they are you know record wise slightly better uh, when it comes to league standings it's an interesting mix of things here. They do beat us in a number of categories. There are some categories we beat them in. Defensively, obviously, is where it gets to be a bit of a concern. But let's go ahead and go through this. So when it comes to total yards, uh, we actually currently have them beat. They're at 25th with 3,506 uh, on the season. And we are 22nd. So, uh, my mistake, they are currently 18th in the league, and they do actually have us beat uh, 
I just when I was going through uh, do updating the league standings, I forgot to just change that. So they actually do have us beat in this category at 18th with 3,506 on the season. We are 22nd with 3,415. When it comes to yards per game, we're, we are at 310.5 per game, which is 26th. They are at 318.7, which is currently 25th. In passing, we do have them beat in the passing categories here. We have 2,754 yards on the season, which is 13th. Um, and that's heavily because of Tua Tungavailoa and his ability to elevate the offense and his ability to mask the offensive line. He doesn't elevate the offensive line. He just masks their mistakes. They still suck. Uh, he's just able to avoid the sacks and still create plays, etc., etc. And obviously he pushes it down the field more and more effectively than Brissett. And hence why, you know, our passing numbers, particularly when he's been in the game, have been a lot better and why we've risen to this point uh, in the season up this far. They're currently 25th in the league with 2,383. Per game average, we're at 250.4, which is 15th in the league. They're at 216.6, which is 27th. When it comes to rushing, we have 851 on the season, which is 29th. They have 1,271, which is 11th. So obviously when it comes to um, offenses, they're and it's not a surprise, their rushing offense is you know better than their passing offense our passing offense is better than our rushing offense if you've watched you know the dolphins that's not a surprise and if you have followed this t the the car uh, the Carolina Panthers it's not really a surprise there either when you really look at the dynamics of how their offenses are built and what they have etc um and actually it, it's even more the case with Cam Newton as the quarterback uh, but anyway, per game average, we have 77.4 yards per game, which is 31st. They're at 115.5, which is 14th. Points per game, we have 201 on the season, which is currently 23rd or 22nd after ties. They have 226, so they do have us edged out there. They're 20th in the league or 17th after ties. Points per game, we're at 18.3, which is 26th or 25th after ties. They have a slight edge there at 20.5 per game, which is 22nd or 20th after ties. Third down offense, we are the better third down offense by a good amount. We are converting at 42%, which is 12th. They're only converting at 35.4%, which is 26th. So that is a good sign potentially for our defense and hopefully being able to get them off the field. Um, uh, on third downs, right? And and give our offense more opportunities and less opportunities for them. Now, here's actually where it becomes an issue, though, for the Dolphins, because they have these, I, I think overall, they are actually currently ranked the second defense in the league, second ranked defense behind Buffalo. Um, so they... They're a tough defense. They're a very tough defense, and it's going to be. We're going to get to the keys to victory here in a minute, but it's going to be tough sledding, I think, for this offense. And you know, overall, the defense for us, while it doesn't rank, you know, great in a lot of category in some of these categories, um, it is obviously the strong suit of this team. And certainly on paper and with the way that they perform over, over the past few weeks, especially as the play calling and stuff has changed and gotten better, uh, they are definitely capable of performing at a high level. And so ultimately, I do think that this is going to be probably a, a relatively low scoring game. Just real quick, though, by the way, side note, I think it's funny that you, whoever it was, I think it was Elijah Campbell had said recently that, you know, Brian Flores, or, you know, had a talk with them and he said that they're going to play a completely different brand of football and it got guys energized and bought in. I just want to say that real quick, it's funny the timing and I've talked about this a little bit, the timing being that, you know, the trade deadline passed and they, you know, realized that they have to stick with Tua. They're not going to be able to get Deshaun Watson yet that they're going to have to wait till the off season to do it. Um, and finally, after the trade deadline, and because that's when we started playing better on, on defense, that's when the play calling got better. You know, the Texans game, 
uh, the Baltimore game, the Jets game right after that, because the, the Texans game was the first one after the trade deadline, and that's the first time where we actually started to see these Ruby packages and then bl playing more aggressive with all these blitzes and so on and so forth. Um, uh, and it's it's not a coincidence to me, to me personally, and because look, I mean, the, the offense hasn't changed. The only place that this team has changed is on defense. And so look, you know, some people might say it's a bit of a cons uh, conspiracy theory, but to me at this point, it's it's no question that the organization has made up their mind about Tua, and no matter what that Tua no matter what Tua does this season, I firmly believe that they are still going to go after Deshaun Watson, and that's in large part what the reason why I've stepped back on my belief that Flores and Greer are going to get fired because I think that's ultimately what's going to be their you know, saving grace at least for another half a season or, 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 you know, maybe a full season, depending on how next season goes after acquiring Deshaun Watson. But I do firmly believe that as of right now, whether it does or doesn't happen in the long run, obviously the legal situation has, you know, something to do with that and obviously could put a stopper to it if he was to get convicted, for example. But I do firmly believe that is what they are going to do. I don't believe that they're in on Tua. Obviously, Brian Flores never wanted him. They have a contentious relationship. He's jerked the kid around a lot. He's set him up for failure at numerous, you know, on numerous levels. So I do think that there is... Uh, you know, credence to the sabotage narrative that Brian Flores is trying to sabotage him the way he put him on IR when he probably could have come back earlier from the ribs. He held him out of the Texans game and halfway through the Baltimore game with a finger injury that yes, it exists and is bothering him, but he could have played through and he did play through and prove that he's able to make throws just fine, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think, you know, it's just, it lends to to, and because at the end of the day, I think that what he's trying to do is convince Stephen Ross and overwhelmingly has convinced Stephen Ross that Tua is not going to be the guy long term. He's not going to be the answer to the who's my Dan Marino quest because that has been uh, Stephen Ross's blueprint. And he's and and the the one in seven start knowing that, you know, the quarterback gets a ton of heat of that. You know, I, I just think that. He's been helping to push the narrative that one way or another, whether it's the offense has been failing or even though it's so much better with Tua or he's, you know, weak and he can't handle the, the rigors of, you know, football or whatever it is, I do firmly believe that he has been setting him up for failure and pushing the narrative one way or another for a number of different reasons to Stephen Ross. And anyway, so I know that's a little bit of a tangent, but I have been thinking about that a lot and been wanting to kind of get that out there. So, um... I just find it funny that all of a sudden now the defense is starting to play like they used to last year what you know started to really have success for them and you know now they're playing better and blah 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 and I just I don't think it's a coincidence that the first game after the trade deadline when they were unsuccessful in getting Deshaun Watson before the trade deadline passed and they had to stick with Tua no matter what I think it, you know, now he's trying to use that as another bit of fuel for the why I'm not the problem. This is Brian Flores because look, it's not my defense. And even early on in the year when the defense was struggling, now look again, I expected some natural regression, probably somewhere more to the middle of the pack. You know, maybe you know, top 15, top 10 ish, but they obviously dropped way down. That's in large part because of the play calling right? And they weren't being aggressive early on, but even still, they were the reason for the only win that we got in the first eight games, right? Uh, in New England, Xavier Howard, etc. And Xavier Howard played a huge role with that fumble return for a touchdown. Anyway, point is though, is, is it's, it's just, it's, it's shady to me and it's not a coincidence. And I think it's just more, um, evidence that really lends to the, the narrative that, um, Brian Flores, doesn't want Tua, he's never wanted Tua, and he's doing everything in his power to show Steven Ross, the guy who makes the ultimate decisions, that, hey man, it's not me, I should be the one to stick around, you need to get rid of this kid because he's not the answer. Anyway, enough of that, again, defensively is where it starts to really become an issue for the Dolphins, 
Um, currently, we're giving up 382.8 yards per game, which is 29th. They're giving up 288.7, which is second in the league. We're giving up 290.8 through the air, which is 29th. They're giving up 195.4, which is second. So they do have a really good passing defense. They're also really good at getting to the quarterback, which is going to make it very difficult for this Dolphins offense. Uh, come Sunday. Rushing yards, we're giving up 108.6, which is 13th. They're giving up 114.5, which is 19th. So hopefully a little bit of room for opportunity there. Uh, points per game, we're giving up 24.5, which is 23rd or 21st after ties. They're giving up 20, 20 which is currently 6th in the league. So, you know, uh, it's going to be rough. <laughs> it's going to be rough. I think it's going to be rough. Uh, and I do think it's going to end up being a low-scoring game, defensive heavy. Anyway, we have 16 takeaways on the year, which is ninth or 6th after ties. They have 13, which is 16th or 8th after ties. We currently have 7 interceptions. That's good for 21st. ninth after ties. They have 8, which is 19th. Or, uh, or no, no, I'm sorry. I forgot to update this. I did this again. Uh I did this last time too. We are 10th after ties. There we go. I just forgot to change that. Um, and they are 9th after ties. When it comes to fumbles, we have 9, which is 4th or 3rd after ties. They have 5, which is 21st or 6th after ties. Sacks, we have 23 on the season, which is 18th or 10th after ties. They have 30 sacks on the season, which is currently ranked 3rd in the league. We have 59 passes defensed, which is first. They have 40, so they're still pretty decent there. 20, or, I mean, obviously in the bottom half of the league, though, overall, uh, which is 21st, 15th after ties. And then when it comes to third down defense, unfortunately, we're giving up for, to this point in the season 45.8%, which is 29th. They're giving up 34 0.3%, which is fifth. So again, it's looking like it's probably going to be a really tough day for the Dolphins offense. But let's take a look now at how each team did in their previous game. This is obviously how we played against the Jets and how they played against Washington football team. When you look at those two teams, I would say Washington football team is better. So they played the better opponent. But when you look at this, we win a lot of these these head-to-heads when it comes to stats and stuff like that. And obviously, if the game were to play out with this kind of a box score and stats, obviously we would like that outcome because this would be a win for the Dolphins. We scored 24 points against the Jets. They scored 21 against the Washington football team. We had 388 total yards. They had 297. We had 273 passing yards. They had 186. We had 115 rushing yards. They had 111. So in all of those categories, we win. They win in the yards per play. They're 6.1 to our 5.8. Neither team lost a fumble. We did throw an interception, so obviously they would win the turnover battle there. We were 57% on third downs they were only 22 percent so obviously we would like to see similar numbers in that regard when it came to time of possession we won there with 33 35 to their 2407 we would like to see something like that as well we do not want to see eight penalties uh obviously that's been an ongoing issue the entire season but and they had seven so they ob obviously edge us out slightly in that category now cam newton has barely played so keep that in mind when it comes to these statistics but um this is what he has performed at so far on the season i do expect it obviously to change i'm pretty sure his his you know um completion percentage is going to go down his passer rating is probably going to go down a bit even if he has a good game just because to perform at that level is pretty intense but you know currently he's at 77.4 percent completion percentage 197 yards three touchdowns to no interceptions and 125.3 passer rating Tua is currently completing 68 percent of his uh, passes for 1471 yards nine touchdowns to six interceptions and a 91.4 passer rating now, I do think, look, is he the MVP Cam Newton of a few years ago? No, and I do think he's probably, you know, lost a little bit, although he is fresh. He hasn't played the entire first half of the year, and I do think that he he's certainly way better than Sam Darnold. I would much rather have Sam Darnold in this game, um, or even P.J. Walker for that matter, but Cam Newton does add, he is familiar with the, the you know, their 
their team, their offense. Um, he is fresh, and he does add a different element to this offense than what either of those other guys do. He's obviously a lot more experienced. He has, you know, the ability to use his legs, um, and he can be a threat. And with Christian McCaffrey and some of the guy, those guys that they do have on the outside at receiver, I think that it could, you know, um, it could pose some issues for this Dolphins defense, especially with as banged up as they are getting. But let's go ahead and get to the keys to victory if the Dolphins do want to win this game. So offensively, it starts by protecting Tua at all costs because. Um, Brian Burns and Hassan Reddick are, I obviously just gave you the league standings. They have 30 sacks on the season. Those two guys alone have 17 and a half of them, if I remember correctly. And it's going to give Jesse Davis and Liam Eichenberg fits. And they just, again, they just have a really good defense. They have a really good pass defense, which would, you know, take away the strength of our offense. Um, you know, so it's, and we obviously are not very good at pass protection to begin with, but if they want to win, if they want to have a chance at winning, they 100% need to protect two at, at all costs, and they need to play the best game of their careers, of the year, and they need to keep those guys at bay, because if they don't, it's going to be a very long day for Tua in this offense. Then, number two, they need to run the ball effectively, which will actually help in, you know, uh, the number one aspect, they'll you know, hopefully be able to take some heat off of that pass rush if they are able to run the ball effectively. And even though I do not believe that the running back room has been completely fixed, I do actually, and, and you know, I said that I, overall I do like the players of Duke Riley, or no, sorry, um, <coughs> excuse me, swallowed a little of my spit there down the wrong way. Uh, Duke Johnson and um, Philip Lindsay you know, I mean, I, I think it's the room is kind of crowded now. And what, you know, what does that say for Patrick Laird, who I, I really don't care about? Or, you know, Jared Dokes, um, maybe not good things. So, you know, Jared Dokes, he's obviously another draft pick that, you know, we can't afford to have more and more draft picks pile up is, is not good. So we would like to see more production out of him. I personally would have liked to have seen him elevated, um, you know, especially in place of like Laird. But, you know, have, bringing in those two guys, what does it say for them in Duke Johnson and Philip Lindsay? However, I also do think that those guys are, are overall upgrades. And I do like the running back room a lot better now if Duke Johnson... Uh, Miles Gaskin and um, Philip Lindsay, and then you know throw in Salvan Ahmed. I, it's a solid room. It's a solid room. Um, so they they now will Philip Lindsay even play this week? I don't know. He did start practicing with the team. We shall see. Maybe not. He may end up being inactive. But I think overall, um, it will hopefully improve the run game over the remainder of the season. But for this game, we definitely need to be able to run the ball effectively to take off some of the heat from that pass rush and then just to make the offense a bit more effective. And then, of course, as always, because they have yet to be able to change this, no costly mistakes, penalties, or turnovers. Defensively, uh, it's going to be a tall order, but they need, cause, especially because he's not only is he here, but he's healthy. Christian McCaffrey, that's where it all starts. They're going to, because look, if they can stop Christian McCaffrey, I think handling Cam Newton will be a million times easier. If they can't, then I think Cam Newton is going to, you know, do enough in the passing game and also use his legs a little bit and make this very difficult and potentially a long day for the Dolphins' defense. So, especially if the defense can't get themselves off the field on third downs and allow them to convert and extend drives out, um you know, then they're just going to get worn out. And then eventually it could actually start to get a little ugly. There is some potential for that if they start to wear down the defense and then start breaking, you know, breaking them open. But it starts with Christian McCaffrey, stop him, shut him down, then make Cam Newton one dimensional, take away his running ability, set the edge, condense the pocket and get pressure on him and then continue the aggressive play calling. At that point, you should then be able to pin your ears back, send blitzes, confuse him, send pressure and, you know, hopefully be able to take care of business. So 
anyway I know there was a little bit of ranting in there and this video went a little bit long but that is gonna basically wrap it up I do want to give my prediction and look you know as I mentioned a number of times I had my original prediction prior to training camp in the preseason and then my revised prediction after that right before week one and I had this as a W on the schedule the entire time for both of those predictions. But unfortunately, I'm going to have to, as much as I hate to do it, I think I am going to have to go with a 24 to 20 Dolphins loss because I just, I think that their offense is, it's not like super scary, but with Christian McCaffrey being there and being, uh, healthy and with the the added dimensions that Cam Newton adds and they do have some decent guys out at wide receiver I think that their offense is likely to be more productive than ours um, I do think again it is going to be a relatively defensive game and relatively low scoring you know maybe even something like 20 to 17 or something like that right um I went with 24-20 in part because of where both teams currently are league standings offensively and defensively when it comes to points. So, you know, that's right about uh, the average for, you know, them offensively and what we give up defensively, 24 points, and us, what we're, what we're able to get offensively and versus what they give up defensively, 20 points. They give up 20. We usually get, right now we're at 18.8, I think it is. So... I'm saying a 24-20 victory. Hopefully, though, they can pull it out. Uh, it's going to be tough. It's going to be a really tough game, so we'll see how it plays out. All right, with that, I'm going to get out of here. Before I do, make sure you check out the Ravon Sports app, the new fan-driven sports app for all of your sports, basketball, baseball, football, college, whatever it is that you like, and they are looking to enhance your game day experience with live play-by-play -play coverage, live chat chats with other fans and content creators like myself. Look for the links to that in the description box. And with that, I'm going to get out of here. Hope you guys appreciate my perspective. If you do, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the bell if you want to get the alerts. Share my channel and videos with your friends and family. Leave your questions, comments, and concerns down in the comments section. And of course, as always, follow me on Twitter at Dylan Tartaro. And with that, I'm out. I'll see y'all soon. Fins up.